Welcome to the Nebraska History Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Goforth. Each episode, we explore articles written and published in Nebraska History Magazine. And today, we're joined by author Leo Adam Bega. He wrote the article, The Fonda Family in the Omaha Community Playhouse, which was published in the summer 2024 issue of Nebraska History Magazine. Leo, welcome back to the show. Glad to have you. Thanks so much, Chris. So the Omaha Community Playhouse, a very special year for them this year. They're celebrating their 100th anniversary starting next month, September 2024. Uh, talk about, because you talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the article, this origination of the theater itself, and then this quote-unquote little theater movement that happened during the 20th century. Yeah, you know, I, 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 was, I was not familiar with that myself until I started researching this article, and I, and I don't claim to pretend to know uh, that much about it, but I, I, what fascinated me about finding out that there was a little theater movement is that oftentimes, I think, in the past, all the way up to, to today, there's the perception that theater is an elitist thing, you know, that it's not for everyone, mm-hmm. um, and, and that, that becomes a barrier, right? to people even um, uh, venturing uh, to experience theater. Um, And so I think it was a very healthy thing uh, that there was this little theater movement, and obviously it helped beget uh, the Omaha Community Playhouse, which, you know, celebrating its its centennial, um, you know, obviously shows that, uh, you know, it it is, had been this enduring uh, in institution in Nebraska. I, I, I certainly not the oldest or longest lived community theater in America, but you know it, it's right up there. And uh, you know here smack dab in the Midwest, you know it's had such an impact in so many ways. And I think it has served to be the very thing that it was intended to be. It has given over its lifetime so many people let's just say as audience members, maybe their first exposure to uh, theater. And uh, and it's certainly given, you know, countless hundreds, probably by now thousands of people, the opportunity to um, engage with theater uh, as participants, uh, either on stage or, you know, behind the scenes, so to speak, um, as cast or crew members, as volunteers, you know, and then many people, of course, over the years, you know, have made the Omaha Com- Community Playhouse sustainable because of the donations that they make, that is monetary donations. And uh, so it's it's a community effort all the way around. You know, you make a great point because you're know, talking about how this little theater movement gave more access to the audience to experience theater, you know, without it having to be an elite entertainment venue. But then you also mentioned how it also became um, an accessibility thing for those that wanted to participate in. And to think about how this movement really has shaped what we know of Hollywood, too, because you look at the Fonda family that we're going to talk about today and Henry Fonda, and not even that, but you look at the Brando family and kind of going to in my next question here. These are two iconic names in Hollywood, and if it wasn't for this movement, they may or may not have actually been who they were in Hollywood. So they get their starts in Omaha, well, the, the Brando family was more Marlon Brando's mother, but you know, Omaha's where it started. And with the Fonda family, it was the Omaha Community Playhouse. But it was interesting to see that Henry Fonda's introduction into acting really wasn't his decision. Can you talk a little bit about how he <laughs> was thrust into this opportunity? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I know when I first discovered that, I think in one of these interviews that Henry Fonda uh, gave, uh, it you know, with Johnny Carson on the Tonight Show, you know, fellow Nebraskans. Yeah. Um, and, and in other venues, uh, on, on other shows, uh, it very much was clear that uh, this was not on his radar. Um, <laughs> he was studying journalism uh, outside of the state. He came from a very conservative family, although members of his family were involved at the beginning of the Omaha Community Playhouse. Uh, not necessarily on stage always, but uh, so they already had a connection from the get-go, and the Fondas were friends socially with the Brandos. And so there, be- there became this opportunity where Henry was back home from college, I believe he was 20 years old, with nothing much to do, and, uh, you know, Dorothy or Dodie Brando, Marlon's mother, she was very involved in the founding of the Playhouse 
and um, she knew that the director, artistic director, uh, needed to uh, cast this, you know, young male juvenile part for an upcoming production, and they were having trouble identifying someone, and and Doty more or less volunteered Henry, <laughs> very much very much against his his wishes, but you know. Uh, she was a very forceful woman and, and a friend of the family, and like you know, he didn't have a good excuse, uh, and so yeah, he was as you say, uh, almost literally <laughs> thrust into that role on the stage. It it obviously sparked something in him, but you know, I, he also has mentioned, or he also mentioned in interviews that the late Henry Fonda did that. Uh, you know, that first season after this initial acting experience, he he was he remained heavily involved in the Omaha Community Playhouse, but did not uh, act again that season. Uh, but he did everything else he can do in theater. So he learned all the behind the scenes, behind the stage, you know, crafts, and he he fell in love with the whole experience of you know becoming part of this ensemble, this team, this family, this community of putting on theater for appreciative audiences. I mean, it just it just captured him, and then you know he was all in for it from that point on. It's interesting to hear that uh, Henry Fonda's first love with theater wasn't the acting part, but it was the set building, the painting, the behind the scenes aspects that really caught his attention. And then the love for acting, that bug finally started to bite him more and more as he as he went along. You kind of hit on it a little bit. You know, it was it's the community aspect of the theater that he he really loved. Is that do you think something that influenced his his career as an actor? Actor as he went along was that ability of this industry or this type of uh, entertainment to bring people together. You know, I, I don't, I can't say that I know that that was, uh, uh, you know, how, how much of a factor that was for him. But, but you know, I think you make an interesting observation that given you know where he came from and where he got his start, that that sense of creating community probably was important to him. And, you know, whether it was a conscious thing as his career evolved, you know, who knows, but uh, that's not hard for me to imagine that being the case. Um, very much prototypical Midwesterner. And, uh, um, you know, he was, he had a pretty tight knit family and, you know, and the thing is, um, as you know, Nebraska for a, being such a small population state has produced uh, a, a pretty disproportionate number of high-profile people yeah. in film, television, theater, uh, media. And so Henry Fonda was very unique. You can only name maybe two or three other people, off, off the top of my head at least, um, from here who had that kind of great national, even international success in those fields, um, others being Johnny Carson, Dick Cavett, um, uh who retained very close ties to to this place, this place being Nebraska, being Omaha, and specifically for Henry Fonda, the Omaha Community Playhouse. I mean, so he, for the rest of his career um, and life, maintained these ties and the playhouse reciprocally with him. And uh, that tells me a lot, again, about just how important um, his origin story was to him that, you know, where he came from, uh, the people that he felt a part of, it, it never left him. And uh, if you ever, you know, go back on YouTube and watch some of these interviews that he gave about his start in theater and film, and uh, it, it, when he mentions Nebraska, he gets, he gets emotional. You know, very, very similar to, to Johnny Carson in that way. And, uh, and they, they did a couple really superb interviews together over the years and and it, it's very evident that uh you know uh, this this whole sense of being a nebraskan and a midwesterner was part and parcel of, of who he was and, and he, he never forgot that it, it is really impressive you think about the that list and uh, you named a couple of uh, very impressive people that have gone on to have wonderful careers that uh, were, were from Nebraska or lived many years in Nebraska how Fonda's legacy stands out it's so unique too to see not just 
Henry being so connected to the state, but you know, in the the uh, the Omaha Community Playhouse, but it was a family affair, as you said. He had other family members, his, I believe a sis, sister or a mother, and I, I even think his father, who was a very, from your article talking about him, a very strict person, not one that really thought that acting or being an actor was going to be a, a great career, and he even ended up on on stage for at least one production. And you look at Henry's siblings, or not siblings, but his children, like Jane Fonda, Peter Fonda, they may have not acted necessarily, but they have been on that stage. They have toured the, the facilities. Do you know if, if Bridget Fonda, his his granddaughter, ever visited Omaha, visited the Omaha Community Playhouse? I, I don't, but but, mm. but but actually, both Jane and Peter did act on the Omaha Community Playhouse okay. stage. So, yeah, so famously, well, <laughs> that is too, uh, a very small circle of people uh, of a certain age, um, Henry Fonda, at the height of his Hollywood and Broadway career, and Dorothy McGuire, uh, another Omaha com- Community Playhouse alum, and that those two had a history together, and that's that's in the article in terms of um, they once appeared when Henry was a was a up and coming young professional actor, and Dorothy was this new prodigy. Uh, in her very early teens, and they appeared together in a production at the Playhouse. And but then several years later, when both were, you know, Henry by now was a very experienced Hollywood and Broadway professional, and you know, flat out superstar. And Dorothy had emerged as a star herself on both Broadway and in Hollywood. They came back uh, for this 1955 benefit production of the Clifford Odets play, The Country Girl, and the funds that were raised through those performances uh, helped build the new Omaha Community Playhouse, which is the building that stands today. And so that, you know, that is, uh, is a pretty impressive thing. I mean, you know, I, I can't think of another example that that's happened in Nebraska history where two stars from here of that stature both came back. But in that production, Jane Fonda at age 17 made her stage debut. <laughs> um, so yes, very much a family affair. And then Peter Fonda, um, he actually acted on the Playhouse stage. You know, he was a student at the, uni- at the then University of Omaha. And uh, he also acted in plays uh, 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 produced at Omaha University. So yes, all three of them had that direct connection of, of acting on the Playhouse stage. And we don't hear very often about uh, actors returning to the community and being such uh, a profound impact in where they really got started. And not to say that actors do not return to their roots uh, by any means, but your article even talks about during various fundraising campaigns for the Omaha Community Playhouse, when they were trying to uh, really try to grow and expand and work on their facilities, uh, Henry Fonda would even record uh, commercials, promotions, and lend his voice and efforts to at least, you know, participate and help out in some way, even if it wasn't uh, an opportunity to be there or be a part of things, but he would still try to find ways to to be involved. It really goes to show what kind of impact Omaha and the, the Omaha Community Playhouse had on him. And again, talking about his his family and their involvement, this was this wasn't just a kind of a one off thing like when it when it just started. There their family was was involved with the Omaha Community Playhouse quite frequently. Yeah, in, in, in these different ways, as, as you describe. Um, you know, I, I started hearing tales uh, many years ago, early in my journalistic career, that, uh, you know, Peter Fonda, uh, for example, you know, he would just drop in unannounced from time to time. I, uh, how frequently this happened, I, I, I do not know. But he would just drop in uh, unannounced uh, at the Playhouse just to kind of get his nostalgia fix <laughs> because again of these deep rooted uh family ties to that place uh you know and some of which were very personal to him um and uh you know Jane Fonda um you know she came back for a uh, film streams program in which Alexander Payne um right our our most famous uh, contemporary filmmaker from Nebraska interviewed her live on stage at the Holland Performing Arts Center um, and during her Omaha visit, you know, she visited the Playhouse. And, of course, you know, there was an entourage of media following her. Um, you know, she toured the facility. And, and then years before that, you know, she um, uh, was responsible in part for one of the world premier, premier screenings of On Golden Pond 
the only film that she made with her father, who was very ill at the time. And, of course, he ended up winning the Best Actor Oscar for his performance. And uh, that, so, yeah, yeah, she came back for that premiere at the Orpheum Theater. And so there are these examples throughout the Fonda family history. Fonda, Henry Fonda, was also seated with a tribute program at the Playhouse very late in his life, not, not, not long before he passed. Um, and some luminaries came back for that, including Dorothy McGuire. And, of course, some of his family were there. Jane was not able to attend that particular event, but she had a video tribute to her father, which was, uh, which was shown. Yeah, and, and even to this day, Henry Fonda's widow, Shirley Fonda, continues the Fonda family support uh, financially and in other ways, especially to its uh, youth education programs. Yeah, you know, we talked about uh, Henry Fonda's children, Jane and Peter, uh, throughout. And it's interesting to think, too, that Jane Fonda really kind of looked at acting as what what is a quote, a romp or just a passing fancy really didn't take it too seriously until she really started to kind of see more of what her father was doing and started to talk to more people about what it could mean for her. And it's it's really just fascinating to think that here is another iconic name in, with Jane Fonda. And here she just thought acting was meh, kind of a whatever thing, just like her father did. It's almost like it just kind of ran in the family that acting wasn't meh, okay thing until finally the bug bit them. And uh, it, it's fascinating to see how the Omaha Community Playhouse still played a role in that. And it just kind of shows how important that these theater companies across the state, across the nation can impact a single person to, who knows, become the next big thing. Well, for example, <laughs> the uh, Centennial or Century Gala um, that the Omaha Community Playhouse is going to be having in April 2025 is being headlined by Omaha native and Omaha Community Playhouse alum John Lloyd Young, who won a Tony Award as best, uh, I think, you know, I don't, I don't know the exact title, as best featured actor in a musical, something to that effect, uh, for Jersey Boys. You know, he originated that role on Broadway. You know, basically, he's playing Frankie Valley. And, of course, he reprised that role in the Clint Eastwood-directed uh, feature film, <laughs> Jersey Boys. So this is now, yeah, an example of a contemporary uh, Broadway star who, has, who came out of the Playhouse. And, and there are others. Um, and, you know, it's not all of them are necessarily household names, but a number of, of individuals. And so, yeah, that, that um, legacy and that uh, kind of training ground that the Playhouse um, represents, you know, is, is ongoing. And for that same gala event, there's, there's another um, Broadway performer who's coming back. I don't believe he's a Nebraska native, but he had um, uh, quite a long experience with the Nebraska Theater Caravan, which is part of the Omaha Community Playhouse uh, programming. And so, yeah, there are many examples like this. And, uh, and, and there's no reason to expect that these kinds of stories of, of artists who got their start at the Playhouse and go on to national, international acclaim will not continue in the, in the foreseen, you know, uh, decades. Leo Adam Bigga is joining us on the podcast today as we talk about his latest article that's in the summer 2024 issue of the Nebraska History Magazine, The Fonda Family in the Omaha Community Playhouse. The Omaha Community Playhouse celebrating its 100th anniversary this season, starting September 2024, next month, and uh, taking an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the... the uh, Fonda family, their connection to Omaha, their great connection to the Omaha Community Playhouse and how that has continued on. And Leo, I, I was looking at the Omaha Playhouse website and they are continuing to be in the, the Fonda family continues to be involved as uh, they uh, continue to, to support different programs, including one, I believe that's about, uh, you know, educating and teaching uh, young people to get into theater. So it's a legacy that even continues today. Oh yeah, yeah, that, and that's what I was referring to earlier. His his um, his widow Shirley Fonda uh, continues that support, um, and you know, for all I know, Jane Fonda makes some kinds of contributions, uh, 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 you know, in a quiet fashion. Um, you know, I was I was just thinking back to uh, some of the interviews, which you can readily find on YouTube, of Henry Fonda talking about you know uh, those early years um, as he was falling in love with with stage um, stage work. 
And I remember in one of these interviews with Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show, Carson was asking him how much he got paid <laughs> when <laughs> when Fonda was acting at the playoffs. And, you know, and, and Fonda's, you know, face kind of lit up uh, with, with bemusement. And, you know, he explained to Johnny, you know, this is community theater, uh, uh, Johnny. This is amateur theater. There was no pay. <laughs> and that, that's an important thing to remember. Uh, for, for most um, of its life, the Omaha Community Playhouse was, was a true classical <laughs> amateur community theater where no one got paid except for the few staff members. So none of the actors and, and probably uh, almost none of the crew. That eventually changed to certainly where they had professional you know, crew people, you know, specialists in you know, set design and, and sound and uh, you know, music, et cetera. Uh, but still, uh, only until very recently, the, the only actors who got paid were, were, might have been like the lead actor <laughs> of, a, of a musical or a drama. And the other actors didn't get anything. And that's only changed to where all actors now get paid something. Um, just in the last few years, so it, it, and it's, it's another example of how you know this is this is like um, a real life um, uh, takeoff on the old let's put on a show, <laughs> you know, spirit from those old Mickey Rooney, uh, Judy Garland Hollywood movies. Um, that's what that's what the, the, the spirit of this was all about: a community coming together to make theater, um, you know, to uh, uh, enhance. Uh, and enrich the community with this uh, this form of entertainment. You know, to go to speaking to Henry Fonda's humbleness as well. You know that that let's put on a show mentality. It, it seems that when they were doing the fundraising to you know, reconstruct and kind of uh, expand the building during the 1950s, there was an opportunity for Henry to accept his name to be put on the building to make it the the Henry Fonda Community Theater, and he was like, no, 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 I don't. Want want my name upon this because he felt it would detract from that let's put on a show kind of mentality so he he really i guess you could say he really truly understood the purpose of community theater and uh, those those humble roots really showing through during that that opportunity oh it's, it's quite true and and um he was part of campaigns uh long after <laughs> that uh to you know uh uh, put in new seats at the playoffs, you know, for this, for that. And he also did similar campaigns for the Stir Museum in Grand Island um, and, and maybe other uh, organizations and institutions in Nebraska as well, where he'd lend his voice and, you know, you know his status to these kinds of uh, efforts. And, and I'm sure that, you know, there were attempts um, or invitations by the playhouse throughout those years, you know, ensuing years, like, you know, Henry, we, we'd really like to, you know, name this after you or, or, or that after you. And, you know, and again, and again yeah, he, that wasn't so important to him. A few things certainly did end up with the Fonda name, particularly some of the major acting awards uh, that are still presented to this day by the Playhouse, you know, carry the Fonda name and, and also the McGuire name. Um, but yeah, th- this, this was, you're absolutely right. He, he understood uh, what this was about, the purity of it. And uh, even late in his life, he, he got involved in a, uh, and, and it's, it's somewhere in the article, but I, I don't have it in front of me right now. He got involved with a, uh, a very old, uh, longstanding theater group then on the East Coast. And, you know, it was very much in the community theater spirit. And, and some other big names got involved with him. I think it eventually then moved to the West Coast. But even late in his life, he was still very much caught up in that same spirit. So it, it never left him. And, you know, so many people who got their start in stage, who became, you know, great Hollywood stars like Fonda, you know, to him, to them, the stage always remained their first love. And, and it's, it's easy for Nebraskans to not recognize or understand that as great a Hollywood star as he was, um, he was an even greater Broadway star and stage star. So, I mean, he's one of the great icons of American stage history. And uh, he had one of the longest running hits uh, in Broadway history up to that point in Mr. Robert, which he then reprised his lead role in the Hollywood adaptation of. But that's just one of many stage triumphs that he had. He toured with a, with a one-man show that was highly successful where he played Clarence Darrow. There were many other things. So uh, we know his film work, but uh, some, some of his 
his greatest successes certainly came on the stage, both as a young man, in middle age, even, even much later in life. And those are largely kind of forgotten now, sadly. It's, uh, you, know, you mentioned his appearance on The Tonight Show and talking with Johnny Carson about his career and, and uh, being an actor. And I love the quote that uh, you put in the article from Henry Fonda about how he just got a real joy out of acting and how he found out 55 years ago you could get paid for pretending that you're somebody else. <laughs> And he he took that he took that to heart because he was very much a, a method actor. He 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 took his roles very very seriously and made sure that he embodied that role completely. And it's just fantastic to see that uh, for for him he was like, you know what? I I, I found out that this is a lot of fun, and they're going to pay me to be somebody else. Hey, why not? Well, so you know, interestingly enough, and and you know, this is fairly well known to those who have um, you know read. Uh, Things about Jane Fonda's relationship with her with her father and, and Peter Fonda's relationship. It, it, it was a complicated relationship for for the two for the two children with their father. And uh, so, even though both became highly successful actors, and Peter Fonda also a director on top of that, and, and also successful producers, but in terms of acting, they never could get their father to talk about his, his acting and his own method. He was not a, he was not an actor studio trained method actor at all. In fact, he did not believe in the method, but he definitely had his own method that worked for him, but he would never discuss it with his own children who were pure actors. <laughs> and so that was endlessly frustrating to them. I mean, just imagine they, you know, by the time they became young adults, they had entered the same trade or craft as their father, but they, they could never have a discussion with him about it. Um, huh. and, and that was just part of the very complex relationship they had with, with, with their father. Leo, you know, we, as we wrap up here, uh, I wanted to ask you, what did you enjoy most about researching and writing about Henry Fonda and his connection with the Omaha Community Playhouse? Well, you know, so I, I have a real, I get a real uh, joy out of celebrating uh, native Nebraskans um, who you know, have and do go on to do really great things in, in in these areas of film, television, theater, media, in particular. And so, I mean, I I'd long known the the Fonda story, and I was just looking, I guess, at some point for an opportunity to kind of tell part of that story in 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 an article. And so, Nebraska History Magazine gave me that opportunity. You know, there's much more to share, of course, but. Uh, you know, I was just hoping to impress upon readers um, and history lovers um, yet another example of this intersection between Nebraskans and these forms of entertainment that you know are so uh, are so popular and uh, make such an impact. Um, you know, Nebraskans have left their fingerprints uh, all over uh, film, television, theater, and media, continue to do so. And so it's a pleasure for me to tell the stories. And, I, you know, I have another one of these stories coming up in Nebraska History Magazine the end of this year about the, the, the really fine feature filmmaker Joan Micklin Silver, uh, now deceased from, from Omaha. A, a remarkable body of work, a pioneering a person in, in Hollywood, um, and uh, most Nebraskans have never heard of her. Uh, a few Nebraskans certainly would know uh, one or two of her films, but it, it's a remarkable story. And again, it, it's my great pleasure to be able to share that story with uh, with fellow Nebraskans. Well, we look forward to, to seeing that, and we'll invite you back onto the podcast to talk more about that episode and that issue when it's uh, released. Leo Adam Big has been our guest today. He's the author of the article, The Fonda Family and the Omaha Community Playhouse, which was published in the Nebraska History Magazine Summer 2024 issue. You can find that if you're a member. Uh, you receive that in the mail, but you can also find that at our historic sites and museums across the state. Just go to our website, history.nebraska.com nebraska.gov to find that uh, museum and site close to you and you can purchase a copy and read that article as well leo always appreciate having you on the program thank you so much and we look forward to having you on again thank you chris i really enjoyed it and thank you for listening to the nebraska history podcast to learn more about nebraska history magazine to listen to more podcasts or to support our podcast by becoming a member of history nebraska go to history.nebraska.gov slash podcast Until next time, I'm Chris Goforth.